Hi folks, this is Matt Ingram again with uh, the second part of Replication 1A, uh, replicating the findings from Baller et al. using Geoda and Geoda Space. In the previous video, I stated that I assumed that you've downloaded the software, uh, Geoda and Geoda Space, and also that you've downloaded all of the data from Blackboard and saved it into a single file uh, from which you are working now on your own computer. So in the previous video, uh, we generated maps 1 through 4, the ELISA cluster maps from Baller et al. In this video, I'm trying to, I'm going to try to get through the next two steps, uh, replicating the, the results in Table 1, the, the simple OLS non-spatial regression, and then uh, uh, conducting the diagnostics reported in Table 2, um, mainly the, the, the top half of Table 2, uh, we're primarily concerned with replicating the, the formal test of coefficient stability, the spatial chow test. Uh, so let's get started with the OLS regression in Geoda. Again, I've, I've opened Geoda and uh, I have the data loaded in Geoda. So from Geoda, from the same uh, toolbar that we had open earlier, uh, from which we generated the LISA cluster maps, if we go to methods, there's only one option that drops down, and that's regression. And go ahead and click on that. Clicking on that pulls up this dialog box, uh, which is basically the interface for specifying the regression model. So let's move. Let's do the 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 first model from uh, table one. Let's pull up table one next to us so that we have it. Uh, Here's table one. So let's replicate this uh, model, 1960, the first model in table one. So we want the dependent variable to be homicide rates. We pull that over to the dependent variable. And then uh, resource deprivation, 1960, population structure, 1960, um, median age, 1960. Divorce rates, 1960, and unemployment rate, 1960. And then we also want the region dummy south. So here is our model specification, right? The dependent variable, homicide rate, 1960. Uh, double check to make sure you have the, the correct year for every variable. And otherwise, uh, we want resource deprivation, population structure, median age, divorce rate, unemployment rate, and the south dummy. Let's not worry about the weights files right now. Uh, we just want a classic basic OLS regression and we've got that selected already so then we can click run and get our results. The results come up quickly as you might expect with a simple regression like this. So now let's, let's just compare them to what we have in table one. Uh, at the top of our regression output, you see a lot of model fit statistics, and at the bottom we have some diagnostics. Let's ignore those for now and just concentrate on our core results here in in the in the center of of the display. Uh, the first variable reported is the constant is the constant. That's the same as the intercept down here. You see that uh, 8.126 roughly. Uh, it's the is the same here, and then. Just glancing quickly, we'd like to see all of the coefficients uh, statistically significant except for unemployment. And indeed, if we just glance over here, we can see that all of them are significant except for uh, unemployment. Unemployment is significant at the 0.10 level, but not at the more conventional 0.05 level. Uh, so th thus far, everything seems to match up. And then if we take a closer look at the magnitude and direction of the coefficients, um, everything lines up pretty nicely. Uh, just glancing quickly at resource deprivation, 1.798, 1.798. Uh, population structure, 0 0.358, 0 0.359, that's what it would round up to, uh, and on down, down the list. Um, so this is a nice replication of the basic OLS regression in 1960. 
We could do the same thing for 1970, 1980, and 1990. I won't do that now, but uh, you have here the the tool to to replicate the basic non-spatial OLS regression. Just change the dependent variable, change your independent variables, and you can leave the south uh, regional dummy uh, each time, and that should that should do the trick in terms of replicating all of the results in table one. Now, after doing their basic OLS regression, Baller et al. Uh, move through several diagnostic steps that lead them to um, build towards concluding that different spatial processes are going on in different parts of the United States. And one of the things that uh, one of the diagnostic tests that leads them down that path is this test of uh, coefficient stability. And basically what they're trying to test is whether the coefficients that we've just looked at, say for 1960, whether their magnitude, statistical significance, uh, maybe even direction, are relatively stable over different regions of the country. Specifically, if we compare the south to the non-south in the United States, is the magnitude, direction, and statistical significance of the coefficients across those two regions, do they tend to be uh, the same? So we're going to start with our null hypothesis that they are the same, that the coefficients are stable, you know, relatively uniform, even, you could say. Uh, and we want to, if, if we reject that null hypothesis, um, then we can say that the coefficients, uh, coefficients are not stable. And maybe that would want us, that would lead us to to want to uh, examine the two regions separately. And that's eventually, as you as you know from reading the piece, where Baller and all end up. They end up finding that the coefficients are unstable, and so that's what motivates breaking up the data the way they did to study the South separately from the non-South. So let's repeat this uh, the top half of table 2, which is is the more convincing, the more compelling part of table 2. It's, it's the formal test for coefficient stability, also known as the, the, the spatial chow test. In order to do that, you need Geoda Space. Uh, that's one of the other software packages that I, that I suggested you download, or that I asked you to download from the Geoda Center at Arizona State. I've downloaded that and have opened it up here. This is the uh, interface for Geoda Space. And it's just as intuitive or user friendly as Geoda. So, here at the top left, we can talk about a lot of the details regarding either of these software packages when we meet in person. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to move quickly through the mechanics as I did before with the replication. Uh, so, here uh, we load our data file. Again, we go straight to my replication folder, and, and we want the overall uh, global data file with all 3,000 plus counties. So click on this, either double click or open it. Doing so opens up a variable list. And with Geoda Space, you can just click and drag your variables. So for 1960, you can just click on homicide rate 1960 and bring it over to your Y, to your dependent variable slot. And then we want to bring over our covariates, our, our independent variables, into this blank area here. So let's do that. Uh, resource deprivation, 1960. Population structure, 1960. And median age, 1960. Divorce, 1960. And unemployment rate, 1960. So it's resource deprivation, population structure, median age, divorce, and unemployment. Then the south dummy, the the region variable, goes over here in R. Now, in the language of of uh, uh, spatial tests for coefficient stability, uh, some analysts will call this a regime variable, right? But basically, what you're trying to identify are spatial regimes. Uh, are there different regimes, different regions where there are different spatial processes taking place, right? Where the coefficients are different. There are different relationships taking place. 
Um, so regime, region, um, for all intents and purposes, the same thing here. So this is all we need at this point. We've got our data loaded into memory, uh, our dependent variable specified, our independent variable specified, and our region or regime variable specified. We just want a standard OLS model, so we don't need to do anything else here, and we can just run the test. I'm going to expand the output window here just so that we can see more of the results. And let's take a closer look. So at the top we see the uh, the re output for regime equals zero. That's where the south region dummy equals zero, so this is for the non-south. We can see a quick confirmation of that by looking at the number of observations. There's almost 1,700 counties in the non-south, uh, so this tells us quickly that we're looking at the at the northern and western part of the country. And uh, this is the analysis. This is the output. If we keep moving down, we see the analysis for region one. This is for the south. We can again sort of quickly confirm that by looking at the number of observations, the number of counties. And we want to scroll all the way down past a few other diagnostics to the spatial chow test, which is down at the bottom here. So this is this is the formal test of coefficient stability across different regimes. The global test is down here at the bottom. This is the test for overall coefficient stability for all of the data involved in the analysis and here we see that the value uh, for this test statistic is about 150. More importantly it's statistically significant. So what does this mean? This means that we reject the null hypothesis that the coefficients are stable across the entire geographic space, the, in the entire uh, set of units that we're analyzing, right? Here, U.S. counties. So this test statistic is our first indication telling us that maybe we need to take a, take a closer look at how the relationships of interest vary across different regions of the United States. Uh, we can compare this to the test of overall stability on the first line up here in Table 2. It's about 150. The, the value won't be exact again because it's based on simulation data or on a simulation process so it'll it, it won't be exactly the same um, but it should be close and more importantly it should be significant allowing us to reject the null hypothesis. A more detailed information is provided for each of the uh, variables included in the analysis right we can skip the constant, but if we just want to stick to our um, variables of theoretical interest, uh, we can see that we can't really reject the null hypothesis at a 0.05 level of confidence for any of the variables except unemployment. Right? Unemployment is the only one that allows us to confidently reject the null hypothesis. So what does this mean? This, this means, in short, that divorce, median age, population structure, and resource uh, deprivation all seem to exert a relatively stable effect across the South and non-South, but that unemployment exerts an unstable, a different effect across the South than it does across the non-South. Again, the, the substantive implications are the, the this is substantively interesting but we, we, we just want to make sure that it's we're, rep, we're replicating what Baller et al. Uh, found and indeed they find that only unemployment um, the, the test was only significant for unemployment uh, so you can only reject the null hypothesis for unemployment not for any of the other variables so Again, these are the, the overall spatial chow test and then the, the, the test for individual coefficients are both very informative in terms of trying to de detect spatial regimes 
that is detecting uh, whether you might want to take a closer look at your relationships of interest uh, across subsets of the data. So that replicates the, the top half, the more important part of Table 2, the formal test of coefficient stability. And I'll stop there in this video and we'll move on with spatial lag regressions and spatial error regressions, Tables 3 and Table 4 um, in the next video.